Imagine storing renewable energy not just for a few hours, but for entire days or even weeks. Without fire risk, without significant degradation, and with a lifespan twice as long as today's lithium-ion batteries. That's really not science fiction today. That's what flow battery technology promises. I'm John from my solar home, and today we're taking a deep dive into flow batteries, how they work, and how they might be the key to our clean energy future. We look at who's building them and whether they have a role in your home or community. Let's look at the fundamentals of flow batteries. A flow battery is different from your lithium ion based batteries. The core components are two electrolyte tanks. They contain liquid chemicals. One is the positive electrolyte and the other is the negative electrolyte. They are stored in separate containers. There are pumps that circulate the electrolytes into a cell stack. That's where the magic of electrochemical reactions happen. And you have a membrane separator, which allows ions to pass through, but it keeps the two liquids from actually mixing together. And surrounding it all is the power electronics that regulates the charging and the discharge. So one key distinction really from lithium ion is that the power and energy are not locked together. In lithium, to get more energy capacity, you need more cells, which also usually means increasing the power output. So they are both usually in lockstep. In flow batteries, power and energy are completely separate. Power, which is the KW or the instantaneous energy the battery can generate, comes from the size of the cell stack. Adding more cells to the stack or increasing the number of stacks will increase power independently of energy capacity. Energy capacity, on the other hand, kilowatt hours, that comes from the size of the tanks. The larger the electrolyte tanks, more capacity they have, the more energy storage we have in kilowatt hours. Increasing the energy capacity does not affect the power of the flow battery. Now, this decoupling means you have great flexibility. You can design a system for very high power but short duration, or you can have a low power battery for very long duration just by changing the tank size and the cell sizes. So why do flow batteries really matter for renewable energy? Renewable energy like solar and wind is intermittent. Lithium ion, you know, in terms for storage, it works great for two to four hours of storage. But if you need to store energy for eight to 12 hours from your renewable resources, that'll get solar energy to cover nights or multiple days, go through cloudy, windless periods, Lithium ion becomes expensive. They also degrade faster. Flow batteries, they solve these three core challenges. Long duration storage. Systems can run for 10 plus hours daily without any cycle life concerns. They've got exceptional durability, 10,000 to 20,000 plus cycles, meaning 15 to 25 years of useful life with minimal capacity loss. Safety and stability usually works well because most of them use non-flammable aqueous electrolytes that don't present a thermal runaway risk. There's no risk of catching fire and you know blowing out of proportion. There's a lot of combination of flow batteries out there. Let's look at the leading flow battery chemistries. The leading flow battery chemistry is the vanadium redox flow battery. They are called VR. They are mature, mostly commercially available right now. The advantage is that vanadium is used in both the tanks. This eliminates cross-contamination. So they are stable over thousands of deep cycles. Efficiency is in the 70 to 80% round trip. In terms of shortfalls or limitations, vanadium prices can be volatile. They are actually linked to the steel industry's demand. And these batteries typically have a heavier footprint per kilowatt hours versus lithium ion. The key players are Infinity, Energy Systems, Ronki Power, and Sumitomo Electric. The second chemistry is the iron redox flow batteries, the IRFBs. Again, advantages are iron is abundant and cheap, non-toxic, lifespan is usually 20 plus years, very, very environmentally friendly, and the limitations are again, lower round trip efficiency. This one's in the 60 to 70% range. So you need very large tank volumes for equivalent capacity. The key players in this are ESS Inc. and Volt Storage. The third is zinc bromine flow batteries. Now the advantage of the zinc bromine are they are very high energy density for a, so for a flow system. They are also suited for high climates. 
you know, there's a lot less cooling which is required. The limitations are that bromine is rather corrosive, so it requires very careful handling. The key players in this today are companies called Redflow and Primus Power. Now, there is a new technology coming up in flow batteries, which is organic flow batteries. These use carbon-based molecules in water. So the potential here is really ultra low cost and extremely eco-friendly systems. But they are currently in the lab and in pilot stage. So what's happening in the real world in flow batteries? In Japan, Hokkaido, there is a large vanadium redox flow battery that's currently stabilizing their wind heavy grids there. They have solved the problem of curtailment. Earlier, when wind energy production happened during hours of low power demand, the excess energy produced by the wind had nowhere to go. It just had to be throttled and curtailed. Now with the VRFB batteries, there is more renewable build out that's happening. None of the energy is going to waste. In China, they've installed 2.4 gigawatt hours of new flow battery capacity in 2023. Their largest products, their largest projects are the one in Dalian, 200 megawatt, 800 megawatt hour flow battery, one of the largest in the world. In the United States, you have ESS Inc. They're deploying iron flow systems and they're doing it for utilities and microgrids. They've done it in Oregon, they've done it in California, and even now Hawaii is exploring long duration pilots. In Europe, Volt Storage in, in Volt Storage in Germany is focusing on community storage, and they're also building batteries for commercial buildings. Yuki's Infinity is supplying VRFPs for industrial sites. So how do the economics look like? Historically, it's been about $500 to $800 per kilowatt hours installed, but right now it's dropped to about 350 kilowatt hours in larger projects. They are now competitive with the lithium ion for the greater than six hour applications the global market in 2024 was about 0.7 billion for these batteries. And the forecast is by 2029, we'll hit 1.5 billion. The most growth is expected in utility and community storage. So overall, the pros and cons over lithium ion are the long lifespan, it's double or more, a safer chemistry, the scalable energy capacity without increasing power electronics, deep discharge capability without harming the lifespan of the battery. The disadvantages are it's a larger physical footprint. Efficiencies are definitely lower than lithium ion, and they're less suited for very high power, short duration tasks like EV acceleration. So when will flow batteries hit our homes? What about homeowners like us? Flow batteries aren't yet a mass market product, and they're way more expensive per kilowatt hour for smaller systems. For communities, commercial and utility use, they're looking to be a great bet. They're also excellent for microgrids, you know, where you need a resilient disaster recovery system or you need an island grid like in Puerto Rico. These are perfect for those kind of applications. They also complement solar and wind farms, as we have already talked about. So flow batteries won't replace lithium ion everywhere, but they're carving out a really strong niche for themselves in the long duration, safe and scalable storage space. They could really be the backbone that allows solar and wind to power entire regions day in and night without backup from fossil fuels. I'm John from My Solar Home and if you found this deep dive useful, do subscribe and check out my other videos on battery technology, including my breakdowns of solid state batteries and the best home energy storage batteries.